Welcome everyone, my name is Cassandra and I'm going to take you through this beginner yoga sequence which is great to build and work on flexibility, strength as well as balance. So a well-rounded flow, no props are required and let's begin lying down on our backs. Starting in Shavasana, which is usually how we end classes, just let yourself recline fully on the floor. You can widen your feet towards the bottom corners of the mat, turning your palms to face up towards the sky and feel your shoulders roll down and away from your ears. And you might close your eyes. We're using this first pose as a way to really connect to our breath. Throughout practice, see if you can breathe in and out through your nose and feel that breath travel all the way down to your lower belly so that you feel your belly expand as you inhale. And on the exhale, you wanna feel your belly button as if it's dropping down towards the floor, really letting all of the air out. And we want to get our inhale to be just as long as the exhale. So let's take five breaths here where you inhale, maybe counting up to five and exhale for that same count. Really working on the engagement of your belly through this breath. So let's inhale one, two, three, four, five, exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Take a few more at your own pace. Relax your facial muscles, your shoulders, your neck. And now let's reach our arms up overhead, get a great big stretch as if you were just waking up in the morning. And pull your right knee in towards your belly. You can hold on to the back of your thigh or the front of your shin and lengthen out through your left leg. Push into your left heel. And draw both shoulder blades down your back. And notice where you feel this pose. Take a few ankle rolls with your right foot. See if you can also flex and point through your toes. And now bring your hands interlaced behind the back of your thigh and we're just going to straighten that leg any amount. So it's early morning for me when I'm filming this, so my muscles body is feeling a little tight. You might be able to go a lot higher up, just see what feels the best for you here. And once you have your leg at the intensity that works the best for you, try to flex your foot as much as you can, really as if you're kicking your heel into the ceiling curling your toes towards you, and then switch by pointing your toes up, stretching through the top of your foot. Keep your leg like this, just bend your left knee. We're gonna cross the right ankle over the top of the left knee and thigh, push your thigh away, and maybe you hold here, or maybe you reach through, pulling your left thigh in towards your belly. And I like to rock a little bit here, side to side. So just checking in to see how your outer glute and hip feel. So we are not curling or lifting head and shoulders off the mat. And let's bring both feet flat on the floor with your knees bent, coming up into our bridge pose, Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. So with your feet hip width distance, you almost want to be able to touch your heels. So get your heels in pretty close, but do not widen your feet as you do this. Align your sit bones with your heels. Shrug your shoulders down and away from your ears. 
push into your feet and curl to lift your hips, your low back, and your mid back off the floor. And just tiny little pulses. Think of squeezing through your inner thighs and squeezing as if your knees were coming together. Keep pulse, 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 pulse. Take a few more like this, really engaging through the inner leg, squeezing into your glutes to lift your hips up even higher for five, four, three, two, one, and lower down. Bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees fall apart and bring both hands to your lower belly here. Take a few moments in this reclined butterfly pose, Supta Baddha Konasana, and come back to that same breath rhythm you had when we first began practice. And breathe all the way under your palms so you should be able to feel your belly rise. And as you exhale, feel it sink it back down towards the floor, letting all of the air out. And let's straighten the arms up overhead, straighten your legs, big stretch here again. And we'll do that sequence on the second side. So now pull your left knee in towards your belly. Keep your right leg extended and reach into that right heel as if you're pushing it into the floor. And at the same time, you're drawing that left thigh in closer towards your chest. And maybe take those same little ankle rolls with your left foot, flexing and pointing your toes. Noticing if there's any tension here in the extremities. Relax your shoulders. And we'll hold on to the back of our thigh this time and start to straighten the leg any amount. So try not to judge how far you're getting into this one. As long as you're feeling a pull behind the back of your leg, you're doing the pose perfectly. Once you have the range that you're looking for, flex your foot as much as you can, push into your heel. You might feel this a lot in the back of your ankle and into your calf, curl your toes back towards your shin. And now go ahead and point your toes as much as you can, reach. We'll come to reclined pigeon pose. Start to bend your right knee. You're gonna cross your left ankle over the top of that knee and reach through to pull your right thigh in towards your belly. Maybe rocking a little bit side to side again. Relax head and shoulders. Right now we are primarily focusing on our lower body. Don't worry, we'll get to our upper body soon enough. And let's release, we're coming back into that bridge pose. So feet again are hip width distance apart. Roll your shoulders down and away from your ears. Push into your heels and squeeze to lift your pelvis up. Push down into your big toes and find those same little thigh squeezes here. So little pulses and you're trying to lengthen and flatten your lower back. Soften your shoulders. Squeeze, 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 squeeze for five, four, three, two, one. Curl down with control and a few last breaths here in your reclined butterfly pose. And now this time bring your right hand to your low belly and left hand to your chest. So as you inhale, feel the belly inflate first. And then with the lingering fullness of the breath, you also want to breathe underneath your left palm. As you exhale, exhale from the chest first and then from the belly. So inhale, belly, chest, exhale, chest, and belly. A few more like this. Inhale, exhale. Two more at your own rhythm. Good. 
And now just go ahead and roll over onto one side, push your hands into the floor to lift up and come to take a seat. Sitting in any way that is comfortable for you here, just to lengthen up through your chest and let your head drop down. So ear towards one shoulder. We're just gonna take a little half moon circles. Just stretching into your neck, lifting up and keep going. Try not to round or contract with your spine here. You're keeping it nice and tall. One more on each side. And lift your head all the way back up through to center. So eagle arms, bring your elbows out in front of you, bent at a 90 degree angle. And you're either going to just wrap your right shoulder or right elbow under one. Maybe you also bind and wrap through your wrists and palms. If none of those really work, you can just reach back and hold on to your shoulder blades. So whichever variation you'd like here, think of pressing your shoulders down, keeping your elbows up and move your hands away from your face. You might choose to stay here or you can add on by tucking your chin towards your chest as if you were going to rest your forehead on your biceps. Inhale, open up and expand and we'll go to the other side right away. This time left arm under the right, binding once or twice or just reaching back as far as you can. Shoulders down. Elbows up, hands move away from you, and maybe tuck your chin down. Inhale, open it up and expand. Uh, let's release. Go ahead and open your legs out into a straddle. It really does not need to be open wide. If this is more what you're doing, that's perfectly fine. We're not going to be here for long. Use your fingertips behind you to push and lift your chest up. So we're trying to work on tipping our pelvis forward. And you might be able to kind of push into the floor, leaning with a flat back. So we're not going very far in our fold here. We're just trying to lengthen through the spine, tipping the pelvis forward, getting into our hamstrings. And let's come all the way up, tabletop pose on hands and knees. Bring your palms underneath your shoulders, knees directly underneath your hips, and we'll take cat and cow. As you inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze, tailbone up. Exhale, round and contract, push the floor away from you. And keep going here, in and out of those two poses. Try not to bend your elbows. Exhale, release. Inhale. And exhale. Push into your fingertips and knuckles. Try to keep the weight out of your wrists. Last cycle, inhale, open your heart, exhale, round through your upper back. Now come to a neutral tabletop pose. This is a core strengthening posture. You really wanna feel your abdominals squeeze and engage. Bring your right hand behind the back of your head and keep that elbow lifted. As you inhale, see if you can open out to the side. And then exhale, come back to face the floor. You're not gonna move all that much. This is quite a challenging movement. Inhale, see if you can lift that elbow up. And exhale, bring it back down. Try not to move the left elbow too much. Inhale. And exhale, one more like this. Inhale, reach. And exhale to release. Walk both hands out in front of you. Melt your heart and your chest down into your puppy pose, Anahata Asana. 
So you're keeping your hips lifted high over the top of your knees. Try to keep your elbows lifted off the floor as you push into your hands. So it's almost like we're trying to press our shoulders down to the mat. And now bend your elbows so they can rest on the floor and shift all the way forward onto your belly into your sphinx pose so a little bit of a back bend here as you broaden and open through your heart press your shoulders back chin parallel to the floor and release full down tabletop pose push back nice and strong tabletop stance let's bring our left hand behind our head this time as you inhale open and lift your elbow up exhale bring it back parallel to the ground a few more like this it might feel easier on one side than the other that's very normal try not to bend your right elbow one more and exhale and this time let's come into a wide like a child's pose big toes together knees as far away as you would like press your hips towards your heels and sink down so getting a big inner thigh stretch Slide your shoulder blades down your back. Now notice how far away you have your hands from your feet. We're going to come into our downward dog next, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And this distance that we have between hands and feet is pretty much the distance we want to keep in our down dog. So you can start to lift yourself up, bring your knees in. You'll want to have your hands shoulder width distance apart, fingertips spreading wide. Tuck your toes under so that your feet are hip width distance apart. And then you can ease your way up as you curl and lift your hips up towards the sky. If the hamstrings, the calves, the ankles are really tight, it's so normal for your heels to not touch the floor. Please don't worry about that. Instead, I want you to focus on lengthening your arms and finding lots of space along your spine. Curl your tailbone up towards the sky and draw your lower belly in. <sighs> Stay strong in the pose. We're not here for much longer. Push into your heels. And we're just going to step our feet forward to the top of the mat. Take as many little steps as you need. Coming into our Uttanasana, our ragdoll forward fold. Your feet might need to go a little bit wider than your hips. Bend your knees as much as you'd like and just hold on to your upper arms or your elbows and maybe sway a little bit side to side. And release your hands down to the floor, bend your knees generously and feel your heels push into the ground as you roll all the way up, inch by inch, head and shoulders are the last to make their way up. We're going to come into Rikshasana tree pose. You're going to lean on your right leg and bring your left foot somewhere along the inside of that leg. Maybe your toes stay down on the floor for support. Maybe they go up to the calf, or maybe they go up to the inner thigh. Just make sure you're not putting direct pressure on your knee here. Try to avoid your kneecap either above or below. Lengthen your tailbone down, draw your belly in, and think of pushing that left knee open. Hug everything in towards the midline, hands at your heart. So moving is totally normal, swaying is normal. It's pretty much impossible to be completely still in a balancing pose. And if you fall out, it's no big deal. 
Think of lengthening up, growing even taller with this one. One more big breath. And go ahead and step your left foot back behind you, maybe about like three feet or so. And you want your left foot to be at a 45 degree angle. Your feet are about hip width distance apart. So you're like on two train tracks instead of being on a tight rope. With your hands on your hips, square your pelvis forward so both hip bones are facing the front of your mat. As you inhale, lift and lengthen and just start to tip and hover a little bit. The lower you go down, the more you're going to notice that your left hip starts to open up to the side. Even if you're very advanced in your practice and very flexible, it's just uh, something normal that we have to be very aware of. We're trying to square the hips forward. Push into your heels. Inhale. Come all the way back up. We're going to do that two more times. Lift and exhale. Tip forward until you're about parallel to the ground. Keep your hips squared. Push into the feet. Lift on up. This is contracting and strengthening our hamstrings and spine. Last one. You're gonna hold this one, and maybe you stay where you are, or you might want to fold all the way down, maybe by bringing your fingertips to the floor or holding onto your shin. You can absolutely bend a little bit too in your front knee if the legs are feeling quite stiff. Try to relax your neck. Into our pyramid pose. Still squaring off the hips. And we're coming from here into our runner's lunge. So you might need to widen your stance a little bit. You're bending into your front knee and you might just wiggle the back toes a little bit so that you have your right knee on top of your ankle. Left hand grounds to the floor underneath your shoulder. Right arm reaches up to the sky. Really open up here. Reaching one hand away from the other. And let's bring that right hand down. Lower your back knee to the floor on Janiyasana, your low lunge. Push into the feet as you lift on up. So notice how I'm not sinking my hips as far as they can go. I'm staying a little bit higher so I can lengthen my tailbone down and engage through my lower belly. Think of lifting and stretching out of your lower back. And let's bring our hands down to frame the front foot. Tuck your back toes under to lift your back knee off the mat. Plank pose. Strong through your core here. Reach the crown of your head forward. Let's bring our knees down first and then lower all the way to your belly. With your toes pointed back, lift up little cobra. Elbows are bent and hugging in. Bhujangasana, open through your chest. Exhale, release, downward facing dog. So try to keep this distance as you press back super strong through your shoulders and arms, tucking your toes under and lifting your hips up and back. And just notice if maybe your heels feel a tiny bit closer towards the floor. Maybe this pose is a little bit more comfortable the second time around. Relax your head. And we'll walk our feet forward to that ragdoll fold again, just like what we did before. Keep your feet fairly wide. Bend your knees, hold on to the elbows, and just sway a little. And release your hands down towards the mat. Bend your knees generously and roll all the way up, inch by inch, pushing into your heels until you're in your mountain pose, Tadasana. And we'll find tree pose on the second side. So this time you're balancing and standing on your left leg and left foot. Bring your right foot somewhere along the inside of that leg, whatever feels the best to you here. We're trying to squeeze that right knee open. 
and try not to push your left hip out. Really hug it in. You're squeezing through the center in order to lift up even taller. Hands at your heart. And I know this is hard, but try not to dig your toes into the floor. We're trying to strengthen the arches of our feet by pushing down into all four corners rather than relying on our toes to hold us in place. It doesn't actually make it easier. Lifting up tall. Slow, steady breaths. Hands to your hips. We're going to find that pyramid pose. Step your right foot back about three feet or so. So you want your feet hip width distance apart. Left toes point forward. Back foot just turned out a little bit, 45 degree angle or so. Square your hips forward. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, tilt and hold when you're about halfway or parallel to the floor. Try not to round your spine here. Push into your feet to lift all the way up, super strong. Exhale, same thing. Dive forward, notice what's happening with your right hip. Squeeze it in. Push and rise on up. Last one, let's tilt all the way forward. And you might choose to stay up nice and high, or you can go deeper into your stretch by folding down fingertips, maybe down to the mat or holding on to your calf. Hmm. Try to release any lingering tension from your neck and shoulders. We'll start to bend into our front knee so we can come into our lunge. Just wiggle your back toes a little bit so that you have your left knee on top of your ankle. Let your right hand stay on the floor underneath your right shoulder. Left arm reaches up towards the sky. Push into your big left toe so it's not rolling out. Into our low lunge, bring the left fingertips down. Back knee comes down to the floor, push in order to lift up. So tailbone reaches down, engage and squeeze through your abdominals as you lift your arms up. Hands come down to the mat. We're finding our plank pose from here. So frame the front foot and step your left foot back to meet the right. Lengthen out, knees come down first, lower all the way to your belly. Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose, roll your shoulders back. Keep your elbows bent and hugging in. Exhale, release our last downward facing dog. Push it back, tuck your toes under and lift your hips up and back. So for this last one, notice if there's a little bit more space created what might feel different for you. And we'll bring our knees down to the floor. Take a child's pose, balasana. You might want to keep your knees closer in for this one and reach your arms back instead of forward. <sighs> slowing down your breath and slowing down your heart rate. We want to start winding things down. And come all the way up. Bring your legs out in front of you. We'll take a little seated twist before we really close things off. So you can bend your right knee and cross your right foot over the top of your left thigh. And you can just kind of hug your right leg with your left arm, right hand back behind you, open into your twist. 
Think of lengthening your spine, reaching the crown of your head up towards the sky. And release, facing forward, switching sides, right leg is straight this time, bend your left knee, cross that left foot over, hug your left leg with your right arm, and use your left hand behind you for support. You can pull your lower belly in and lift it up as a way to twist a little deeper. And let it go. Let's take one last pose here. Butterfly, Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees apart, but this time we fold forward. I like to turn my palms to face up. I'm making this a very passive forward fold, so not using a lot of strength or effort. Just relaxing into it. And letting gravity do the work for you. And walk your hands in, curling back up. We're going to lower all the way down onto our backs. And you can pull your knees in towards your belly, widen them out, maybe rock a little bit side to side, massaging your low back. And we'll close this class coming into the same pose we did at the beginning in Shavasana. Open up through your legs, through your arms, palms facing up to the sky. Close your eyes and just breathe in any way that is natural and intuitive, not trying to force or alter it. Simply notice how you feel. Noticing the effects of your practice on your body, on your mind, and just on how you feel in general. We'll be here for about two minutes. Please let yourself relax. Don't rush out of this. It really is the most important pose of our practice. It gives your body the opportunity to really process and integrate all of the work you've done. So even if it feels like you're not doing anything, I promise you, you are doing a lot. So just rest and breathe. Start to breathe a little bit deeper, moving fingers and toes. And you can stretch and reach your arms up overhead like what we did at the beginning of class, lengthening it out. 
And you can roll to one side, push into the floor in order to rise on up. Take a seat in any way that is comfortable and join your palms at your heart, close your eyes. We'll close this yoga class with one chant of Om. We inhale to chant, big breath in. Oh. Namaste. Thank you so much for doing this beginner yoga practice with me. I really would love to hear from you. Please leave me a comment down below. Let me know how this class went and I'll be sure to post a link to my beginner yoga playlist. I have many other classes that you might want to try. If you'd like to stay a little longer on your mat, you could do this short meditation right here. Please subscribe and hopefully I will practice again with you very soon. Namaste.